Thanks for joining Fox Cricket, Steve. Um, it's now 17 years since you, uh, I think, headed off to, to England, to Kent, to uh, the Seven Oaks Cricket Club as a, as a teenager. What are your memories of, of that as a, as a 17 year old? Oh, geez, yeah, you're testing me here. Um, yeah, it was a long time ago. Um, yeah, I remember I, I had the opportunity to go over and play some, some cricket in England, which was something that I was always keen to do. Um, so I actually left school probably six months early or, or thereabouts to go and give myself a, an opportunity to, to play over there. And, and hopefully it's a, it was a stepping stone towards a professional career. Um, you know, I didn't know at that stage. I was still only um, 17, I think. So um, it was a big move, but one that I think um, paid dividends in the end. It, it taught me a lot about life and um, growing up as a young kid and, um, and gave me some exposure to those conditions as well. And um, being an overseas player, that um, added ex uh, expectation of performing, being an overseas player. So, um, yeah, it was a huge learning curve for me at, at such a young age and um, one that, that I think um, worked well for me in, in the years to come. I think every talented uh, youngster has aspirations of, of experience or, you know, of, of trying to get the best out of themselves. Did you think at that stage you were on the path to, uh, to I suppose, national selection? Or where, where, where did you think? Was the sky still the limit for you? Did you have that enthusiasm of, oh, I could really become something here? No, I think as a young kid, I always had the dream of playing for Australia. There's, there's no doubt about that. And, you know, I worked hard from a very young age to, to try and be the best player that I could be. Um, you know, I loved the sport and I loved working on the, the game and, and just trying to improve each and every day. And um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I probably didn't know at that stage um, when I was 17 that I could be in the position I am now. Um, yep. That was the dream, but um, you know, there was a lot of work to do in front of me first. And um, you know, I, my, my first initial dream was to play for New South Wales and um, you know, play amongst some of those guys that were there at that stage. There were some, some sort of heroes that, that I had growing up that were getting towards the back end, I suppose, of their career or middle of their career. Um, yeah, so I wanted to play with them and um, yeah, fortunately, a couple of years down the line, I think I was eight or maybe not even a couple of years down the line, I, I got the opportunity to, to play for New South Wales and yeah, that was a dream come true also. Any, any, of, uh, any, of, any of those blues take you under your wing at that stage and sort of give you a guiding hand? Uh, I think Brad Haddon was big for me. Um, you know, I think he was a, maybe a fan of me growing up. He, he thought I had some potential to, to play at that level and, and maybe get to the next level. So um, he was very helpful with a few things throughout my journey and making me fit into that, um, that culture at New South Wales. Was, um, he was a big part of that. You, uh, I was wondering what sort of impact or influence your time in short form cricket at that stage, where you're where you 20, 20, 2010, 2011, I think you stand in as, as a captain for, for Brad when he's on national duties for the Sydney Sixers, I think. Um, what sort of impact did that have on your career? And do you think that that was a, a shaping point for you? Yeah, I remember I got the opportunity to captain the Sixers in Brad's absence that first year and you know I was captaining guys like Brett Lee and Stuart McGill um, in particular those two were, were two that I'd you know watched play for Australia for a long period of time and um, wanted to get to that period um, or to, to that um, position myself so um, it was a bit intimidating at times yep. but you know I was able to I think do, do the job well and you know we ended up winning the title that year and um, that was a special memory and something that I, I look back on fondly and it was a great learning experience to be able to lead those older players and sort of do it my way and um, yeah like I said great learning experience. I was going to say is like is cricket as fun now as what it was when you're 17 and, and when you're having those moments just become you, like you talk a little bit like all of a sudden you're dealing with some old established guys where you, you might feel like you know how, how does it feel for you at different stages in your career i mean yeah i mean the different stages are so different yeah. um you come in young as well yeah like you, you come in young um there might be some expectation or whatever around you being a, a young gun or whatever but I feel like there's almost less pressure um, 
because people don't really know what to expect. Um, whereas now, I've, you know, I go full circle. I've played for a long period of time. People know kind of what to expect. So there's that sort of added expectation potentially that, um, you know, I'm supposed to do really well or whatever. So, you know, you can play almost with less fear back then. Um, you know, you, you sort of, and I look back at some of the innings I played when I first started, I was, had no fear and I just went out and played. Whereas now I look and sometimes my fear um, gets in the way of, um, you know, what I'm trying to do. I'm probably not as free flowing in a way. I'm, I'm thinking through different scenarios and that might hold me back at certain stages. But um, yeah, now I learn to deal with pressure differently. I, I like those pressure situations and I want to be the one involved in them. And I, that wasn't to say that I didn't like them back then, but I probably just did it a different way. I just had a different fear or lack of, um, you know, I just went about it. So um, yeah, it's cool how things progress and you play different ways, um, you know, at different stages of your career, I suppose. So experience and wisdom, you know, it could have its uh, benefits, but also, you know, it can have some, uh, it, can, it, can, it can make you appreciate the process more. Absolutely. You uh, look at a couple of your big moments early on, you're back into that test team, the Mahali situation, which I know came on the back of a, a rough, a bit of a, a weird one for Australian cricket at that stage, but that opportunity pops up. What did that mean to you then? I think... Uh, 92, I think you made. Uh, yeah, I remember it. Got stunned. Bit, bittersweet? Or? Threw, away, threw away 100. <laughs> um, but learned something that day as well, you know. Um, I got out stumped, lunging at a ball, and my foot dragged. So now when I face ball that's spinning away inconsistently, I, you know, I bring my stance back slightly so that when I lunge and I drag my foot, it's always in the crease. So it was a big learning um, curve that day. Um, I just thought I'd throw that in. That's something for every young cricketer as well. You'll learn from yeah, each experience. Yeah, I just thought I'd throw that in there. But um, no, I was, that was my first real opportunity to play since I got rid of my bowling basically. And, as a sole batter, so, um, you know, which is what I, you know, came to terms with in the probably two years leading up to that was, you know, to get back into that Australian team, what was my best way forward? And I felt as though getting rid of my bowling and focusing on my batting was that. And I'd had a really good um, couple of weeks in India, um, working in the nets, facing spinners nonstop. Um, you know, I always thought I was a decent player of spin, but playing in those conditions is, is challenging. So um, finding ways to, to go about it um, was important for me and finding the right tempos and, and how to do it. So I had a really good lead in in the nets and faced lots and lots of bowlers and, and found the right way to play um, in my view. And thought if I got the opportunity, I wanted to go out and play that way and, and have the, the courage to play the way I wanted to play. And I think I might have even got off the mark coming down the wicket yep. and hitting um, Pragyan Odra, I think it was, for six. And um, it was, yeah, just to be able to go out and play that way from ball one um, was, was big. And yeah, a, a big confidence knowing that I could score some runs on in Indian conditions against some quality spinners um, gave me a lot of confidence moving forward. Which, which one's more memorable or is it possible to split them? The, the six you hit for the maiden test time and, the, and, and, and I'd love me to know, interested to know what the feeling was there in, in England, in Manchester. Or, uh, the uh, Oval. oval. Uh, oh, sorry, the Oval, yeah. the last one. Sorry, you had a good innings at the Manchester, sorry, the Oval. Uh, Threw that away, yep. <laughs> do you always remember those ones? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. <laughs> or the Wacker one, which was the first on home soil. I mean, they're, they're all special. Um, yeah. To get 100 at the Oval was my first, my first one was, was special. I was batting with Brad Haddon at the other end, um, who, you know, helped me a lot growing up um, through, through the New South Wales system. And um, yeah, to have him up the other end and give me the courage, I suppose, or maybe stupidity, I don't even know these days. Um, I remember the test before when I should have got 100, I got 89 at Old Trafford. I tried to smack Swan out of the park and it wasn't the, the smartest move. Yeah. And I remember Had saying to me, he goes, Jonathan Trott was bowling. He's like, why don't you just hit him for six? And I'm like, geez, I tried that last game. Didn't work out well for me, but 
yeah, all right. If he puts it in the slot, I'm going to take him mid on a mid off a rap. And I was like, got a ball that I liked and I knew as soon as I hit it that it was going for six. So it was um, a special moment and um, yeah, one that I won't forget. But then I think the whacker as well. My first hundred at home, pressure sort of circumstance. Ashes were there to, to be one. We were up 2-0 and um, yeah, we were in a bit of trouble. and. Yeah, that, that innings was uh, one where I gained a lot of confidence, um, you know, coming up against guys like Broad and Anderson, um, you know, who had played a lot of cricket at that stage, were quality test bowlers, to be able to get 100 against them also gave me a lot of confidence and, yeah, it was special to get my first 100 in Australia. You've touched a couple of times on throwing away, you know, you feel like, <laughs> you know, you've got big innings. Do you, are there some that still give you sleepless nights? Like, you know, are you still dirty on a couple? Oh, yeah. Or is it everyone you're dirty on it? Like, oh. do you know what I mean? Like, is it a standard batsman uh, reaction? <sighs> Just ones where I make dumb decisions, really. Like, if I get a decent ball or whatever uh, and, and I get out, then I, I deal with that. But ones where I'm like, geez, I should have done something different, they're the ones that sort of haunt me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, I, and, and you reckon that's common with every batsman, I suspect? Probably. Yeah. You've touched on uh, at different stages, you've spoken about a couple of the superstitions that you've had. D do they linger or do they come and go? Um, no, nah, they're, they're just there yep. pretty much. Um, you know, I make sure I do the same thing every time I go out to play and it just becomes my routine rather than sort of superstition, I suppose. Um, but yeah, they're, they're always there. I think your manager spoke about uh, the future. There's been, you know, discussion. What does the future hold for Steve Smith? Is there, Pat Cummins talks about legacy and unfinished business, he feels like for, for the fast bowling dream and, and the team ahead, you've done some amazing things. What, what does the future hold for, for yourself and for the Australian cricket team? Uh, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I really just don't like to look too far ahead. Yeah. Um, you know, I take it series by series, game by game, and, and just enjoy myself in the moment. Um, you know, we'll, We'll sort all that stuff out and what legacies and whatever look like. Um, it's not really something for me to bother about, really. I'm, I'm not really fussed, so yep. um, other people can talk about that kind of thing. I just go by my business day by day and just enjoy it. Thank you very much for your time. I really appreciate it.